right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Face the Truth. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, talking with my, my guest this week. Um, she's an amazing artist. I, I, I love seeing her work on Instagram. She seems to only paint. I don't know how she has time for anything else because she's <laughs> doing so many paintings. It's crazy. Um, we'll get into that. Um, so before we do that, just hope everybody's doing well out there. Everyone's being safe and um, hopefully being creative. And, uh, and uh, what else? What else could we think of? Is there anything else? No, there's nothing else. There's nothing <laughs> else that matters. We've we've seen Tiger King like way too many times, <laughs> and I think we're ready for something else. So, anyways, uh, without further ado, please welcome Shayna uh, Levingson. Did I say that right? Levinson. 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 Shana yeah. Levinson. All right. Shana Levinson, Casson. <laughs> Casson. Here we not go. A, not official, like legally, but you know, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. No, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah um, so, how are you doing? How's everything been going? Good. I mean, I think as artists, we're so used to quarantining ourselves at home anyway. I think yeah. it's just the things that we're used to is like, as far as going to a brewery or taking my kids to all their activities or just little things that you're just like, Oh crap, I don't get to go do this, you know? Yeah. So we've been just trying to make the best of it. And, uh, I told my kids, I was like, okay guys, I'm going to be on a call. So don't run in here, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. 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 I, my uh, two year olds upstairs and every once in a while you might hear some crazy screaming or something. So <laughs> she is so cute. <laughs> She's so funny. She's so it's the, it's the perfect. Oh, speaking of, there's some <laughs> some door slamming, but uh, yeah, she's at that perfect age now where she's just t saying everything and yeah. Um, it's the I love it so much. I can't wait. Yeah. And we're about to have a, a, her little sister in a few weeks. So oh my gosh, that's really exciting. <laughs> a lot of babies, two teenagers yeah. and two babies. That's how Ooh. I like to roll. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm good with uh, with my two. Yeah, and then you know David's son's in Brooklyn, so yeah, it's like a back and forth kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, well, yeah. No, that's the but, same. That's the same with me. I have like yeah. my kids half the time, and so it's it makes yeah. it interesting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they <laughs> and they have a is. little brother too. They've got a brother um, at their mom's house who is uh, I think he's I think he's almost four. Oh, so wow. it's like they've got. They're gonna have like three like baby siblings, basically. Yeah. So yeah, we yeah. we like to we like to mess up the kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Keep them entertained. Yeah. Yeah. No, but we've been we've been good. You know, thankfully we're. I'm with another being with another artist. It keeps me inspired. So yeah, when I'm in the studio, he wants to be in the studio. When he's in the studio, I want to be in the studio. So, and we share a space, which is nice. You know, and so we're just constantly painting. <laughs> Cheating off each other's papers. That's sort yeah. of thing. <laughs> like, what are you doing over there? I'm gonna do the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, that painting behind you, by the way, is looking awesome. I've been following Thank you, you. Uh, doing that on Instagram. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it's a it's... commission. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. We like those. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, she's. Uh, she wanted originally a lace commission, and we just. She fell in love with my balloon paintings. And so just through email, we finally came up with this idea. And she has a um, a house like right off of the beach somewhere, a second house. So she said that that would be perfect. And I love painting Mylar balloons. It's a fun challenge. It's yeah. oddly easy, but it's also trying to match the colors and yeah, get out yeah. of your own head a little bit. You have to get out of your own way as far as <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You're like, okay, yeah. just paint that color down and. Let it, let it stay there. Oh, for sure. The one thing I really liked is um, I, I think it was a post you shared. Maybe it was yesterday or today, but um, which I think is, a lot of people appreciate. It was a close up. You had some close up shots. Yeah. And um, it's it's got some really nice brushwork. Like I really like that it feels like a painting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Because like you know a lot of paintings. A lot. You know, someone might look at this and say, oh, you know, it's hyper realism, which it, it's very realistic. But I appreciate that when you get up to it, it's like you can yeah. see the brushwork and it's beautiful brushwork. Um, like even I, I love like just a little little highlights where it's like, oh, man, you can almost count yeah. the brush strokes. Like that's yeah, it's uh, that's the kind of stuff that gets me all excited. Like, I, oh, I want to paint, paint now. Like, <laughs> yeah, 
It's me awesome. Me too. I know. Every time I see somebody who paints like, paints like with thick paint, that juicy paint, yeah. I'm like, oh, I want to do. So I, I try to, especially in this, and that's what I love about painting lace. Like when I paint lace, that the texture in the lace is actually really thick paint. So yeah. it's got some uh, some depth to it. It's it's. Um, I mean, for me as an artist, I there's not too much mystery. You know, when I see paintings, like I'm just like, oh, that looks like a lot of work. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. but what I really appreciate about your your lace paintings are crazy. I, I love your hands, the way you paint hands. You do you do beautiful hands. Um, and again, the same thing that I really appreciate as you share in this other one was is just the you know you, when you share the close ups because it's deceiving. It almost looks yeah. like oh, that's so simple. You know, because you can just see when you see the close ups, like oh, that's just paint. Yeah, you know, but like when you when you step back, it's like, holy crap! It's like, um, are you familiar with uh, Justin Coral uh, Coral's work? Yeah. Um, his his so he he does obviously these insane like paintings of trees, um, forests, and everything, and you look at them. I don't know if you've gotten to see one in person, I um, but I saw one last year in Pasadena, and it was insane because you know from three four feet away. It just looks like a photograph, and my first reaction to it is, well, that looks like a lot of work, but also, why? Why yeah. would you want to paint all of those leaves and all that <laughs> stuff? It's insane. Then you take two steps forward and you look at it close up, and it's ridiculous how thick the paint is. It's just like yeah. globbed in there, yeah. and, um, and he's all like, uh, it's kind of sloppy, and I'm like, dude, shut up! It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks amazing. So, but I think that's what's exciting and fun about painting is is that illusion um, that you know, hey, we're making you think you're seeing something else when really it is just blobs of paint. You know, yeah, it's so beautiful. So I, I love that about your stuff. It's like the intricate lace and everything looks so tedious. Um, but then I, I also I see videos of you doing it, and you're just like. Bloop -ba -doop -ba -doop. <laughs> like, okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, it, I, you know it's a zen for me i kind of just yeah. get into a meditative state when i'm just working on an area the only I, I have to say there's been one painting i recently did that at some point got really really tedious for me mm -hmm. was i painted a native american girl and the uh, the rug in the background when i painted the rug uh, there was a point when okay. i was like I'm really, I'm done with his rug. I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but I still just pushed my way through. So it, for, for paintings like that, where, uh, I mean, I'm sure you do some pre-mixing and everything, but there's so many different, like you've got all these different little beads and all those different things that you're getting into. Are you like, pre I actually don't pre mix. You're just doing it on the spot. Just like, I intuitively, you know, yeah, to intuitively paint. And that's why I paint with more than one layer also, because sometimes I see, more color the more that I look at my reference. So I like to mm. build up that process. Um, I don't want to marry a mixed color that I already did because then I'll get set on that and it could be incorrect. Uh, so yeah, that makes I'm sense. Intuitive painter for sure as far as color mixing. Yeah, that's I, that's more like how I work as well. I, I see some painters that do that where they'll they there's so much pre mixing like um, yeah. even my dad does that sometimes where before he starts a painting. I, I think maybe for plein air it's it might be different because you're going out there just to attack the scene real quick, yeah. but he'll like prepare all these colors and values ahead of time. And to me, I'm like, that seems so like crazy. It's so like, how do you like, it, but then it, it, it's like having a box of color pencils, you know, you're just yeah. like, Oh, a little bit, you know what I mean? So I've tried it before, but, um, but yeah, your, your stuff seems so like tedious um, with the, the, like, again, like I look at that and as an artist, I think, that is so cool. That's so beautiful. Um, but you you can do that. <laughs> I'm more <laughs> like, no way, man. It looks so <laughs> insane. But it's awesome. Um, I really enjoy seeing the process. It's really cool. Oh, um, and you said that, I think on your post that you're painting on, I think David paints on this as well, like aluminum. Um, aluminum, yeah. Now, now what is the um, – what is the – your process with that because I, I know David explained it a little bit, but um, I need a refresher, <laughs> yeah. but it seems, it seems like such a unique surface to, to paint on. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I learned it from David because I, I was originally working on, I first worked on linen and then I was trying to work on board and cause I like the smooth surface and 
David put me on the aluminum panel. And so um, I just order it. Well, I used to order it from a sign, a local sign company, but now I'm about to uh, be a ambassador for artifacts and they mm. do aluminum panels. And so I get it unprimed. So it's just sign material. So I get it unprimed. It's mm. either metal or uh, most of the time it has like a white surface. And so I sand it and I put a uh, layer, three layers of gray gesso. And then I mm. sand it again a little bit just so it gets a little tooth to it. And then it's ready to paint on. So mm. typically I'll try to think of all the paintings I'm going to do. I mean, I do a lot of 11 by 14s and I like to have 14 by 18 inch because those are just basic portrait size uh, panels. Yeah. And then I'll size out whatever paintings I have in mind. And I'll try to do it all at the same time, try to like prime them. So I just have panel after panel ready um to go so huh. it's fairly easy and it i think i remember when, when i was talking with david like it's got that it's it's kind of if i remember correctly i think he was saying how it's actually kind of difficult at first uh like the it, it, to build up your layers but i mean is it i think is, it's just the way david paints as far as building oh, okay. up layers because i david and i have like i've helped him with some of the clothing on his survivor paintings and I tend to lay down paint thicker than oh, he does okay. as far as some of the darks. And so he was like, how do you get it so thick? So I told him, I was like, you just got to lay it in. Don't use so much medium. <laughs> so I don't think he has as he's having as much of a problem building up it like he used to just because I think he was. Painting oh, okay. with oh, okay. paint. I mean, this, this is like a whole new uh, I mean, I would, I'm curious to, to, to try it. What, what do you think some of the benefits are with it? Like, what is it that you love about that so much? Uh, I love how archival it is. You know, it's not going to crack like linen will. It won't warp. Mm. Um, it's really affordable. It's lightweight. To, so, you know, the, even large panels are easy to move around as opposed to something mm. that has, you know, that's crated. Um, I think the only negative thing is that you can't instantly hang it. Like, it's not like, you know what I mean? You have to put a board on the back to, so we have all of our panels kind of leaning up somewhere. They're not anywhere that you can hang it up. Uh, oh yeah. But but other than that, I, I I love I don't think there's anything that I would do different. I've tried Artifacts has been sending me linen panels, like they have a dye bond with like a linen glued to it or other primed um surfaces and I just don't like any kind of texture. It just throws me off. Mm. Um I really love the thin the the um uh how um smooth the surfaces because if i want to add texture to a painting i want the paint to dictate the texture and not my yeah. substrate yeah you can control your own texture that way yeah 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 that's interesting i mean for, I, I i um i'm not a big fan of painting on like a stretch canvas uh yeah. that always kind of just has driven me nuts i just yeah. don't like that bounce some I people love either. that they I love know. it it drives me crazy yeah um but I typically like I mostly what I've been doing is like linen boards. Like I like I like the linen boards, but I don't mind a little bit of tooth to it. But sometimes I think like a, a surface that's too smooth also just feels a little um, like the last one I was working on. It just felt like it was slipping all over the place. You know, yeah. I just couldn't get that tooth. Um, that that. But I maybe I so. was doing the same thing though. Maybe I, no, because I, I usually do what you said. I usually do yeah. like a like a, I like to start off with like a gray. Like I I do like a gray gesso, um, and then I I usually do like a few layers of it. But I think I was doing the same thing that like like too much medium and and, and kind of painting thin. Um, I I have that tendency because I think I'm just trying to to be careful, you know. Yeah. But like. But there's that thing where, like, I love, I love, like, once, once you're into the painting a little bit and you start feeling in the groove, you just start having a little bit more, you know, freedom with it. You're just like, oh man, you know, yeah, there's a nice brush stroke. <laughs> Isn't it funny how exciting or excited you can get about a brush stroke? Oh my god, you're like, just like oh, I love that brush stroke so much, or a color. Like yeah. that color is so great. I want to put it in other places. Oh yeah. yeah, and I love, I love getting into the second layer because once I get the first layer on, the second layer can go so much faster because I feel like I've already have the base there and then the paint just picks up so beautifully are you using um are you using much medium or, or is it mostly just are you i mean there's so many different ways you can do it but i'm just curious as you said that you're not like you know you're painting more thick right yeah, but i'm sure yeah. that um like for example the background in that one yeah seems seems thinner 
It's pretty um, textured, it, actually. It is? Okay. Yeah, so, uh, but I use Walnut Alkid for my first layer to kind of, um, to make the paint just kind of go uh, quicker. Um, okay. And I don't, I don't ever use any terps because I don't want it to affect the quality of the paint. Also, it just, I don't want the toxicity, even um, odorless or, you know, I just, we don't use terps really. If I do, I'll make sure that I do it outside if I want to like knock in the background, but really I'll just use liquid original, which I used to not think smelled, but it does have a little bit of a smell to it. Uh, the background of this painting though has oleopasto. So I did a first layer of just regular paint with um, liquid and the paint colors. And then that, the liquid lets it dry pretty quickly. And so then I used oleopasto, which I have right here. Um, it's just like this really thick, thick uh, medium that um, can help you get some nice meat to the to the paint. So I'll use it in the background mm. with a palette knife. So I literally just palette, oh, that's awesome. a palette knife of all of that. Yeah. And then um, I just this morning put on a pattern of fish and then I scraped at it. So I wanted it to look like worn wallpaper. So oh, cool. I'm it's a couple of layers and then I'm going to glaze into it a little bit more. And, uh, and then the collector is going to shoot it. She already loves it. So, well, yeah. Yeah. Should be crazy not to. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. So I'm not, I've never used that other stuff either. You're talking about what's it called again? The, uh, the, it makes it thicker. Oleo yeah, posture. Okay. Yeah. And David uses it a lot in the paintings of older people because it, brings in a nice texture into the lights he oh, doesn't cool. use it he doesn't use it in the shadows just because it picks up a reflection so you don't want the shadow to come forward yeah, you yeah, want yeah. the shadow to recede so in the lights it brings up this really beautiful texture so i'll use it i paint a lot of younger skin but i'll use it in you know if somebody has wrinkles i'll put it in certain areas and it brings a nice meat to it that's cool that's awesome yeah that's a good that's a good tip um so you don't use terps at all so you as far as like, what, what's your trick or your, you know, for cleaning brushes and that sort of a thing? Like, do you have like something you're using for that? Um, when I, I literally hold the paper towel in my hand and just wipe um, my brush in between. And I'm, I get lazy because I don't want to clean all my brushes. So sometimes I'm like, <laughs> I'll, I get really excited if I've only used like two or three brushes for a painting day, which doesn't always happen. But I'll yeah. just constantly wipe the brush down. And at the end of the day, I clean it with, um, master's soap which is a general oh, yeah. pencil it's a general pencil company's like soap uh brand and that does well for my brushes so and i also get a tennis ball cut that in half and so you clean it in the soap and then you clean it inside the tennis ball and that helps keep the shape of the bristles so it's a you know and you're also not doing it in your hand yeah yeah, yeah. i was gonna say that's a good idea yeah um, and I if i'm to... real lazy and don't feel like cleaning my brushes i'll leave it in murphy's oil Oh, okay. Not just like let it soak overnight. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, yeah. it's interesting because I I don't I don't use terps that much, but I do tend to use it just to like rinse out my brush every once in a while. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I that's the fun thing about it, isn't it? Uh, the cleanup. <laughs> yeah, and I'm <laughs> like I don't want to clean my brushes. So I used to love like coming into the studio in the morning and like scraping off my old paint on my palette and putting on new paints. Now I'm like, man, I just want to sit down and paint. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'm like jabbing in to find out where the wet paint is still. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. It's like, I don't know that like, it's, it's funny. I, I recently was talking with my friend Grieger and I was talking to him. I, I think it was on my podcast actually. Um, and someone, yeah, it was because someone asked him a question like, what, what do you love and what do you hate about oil painting? And yeah. he's just sitting there like trying so hard to think about something he hates about it. And he finally was like, I think it's probably the cleanup. That's yeah. probably the only thing, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't mind it as, as for me, like I wish, um, that I, um, you know, could paint more traditionally. I love it. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, make more time to do that. But for me, it, it feels more like a religious experience. You know what I mean? Like it's my, t like when I'm painting traditionally, I feel like, Hey, this is my time. I'm in yeah. my, my, this is my church right now. Yeah. And, uh, all of it is enjoyable for me. Like I don't mind cleaning. I'm a, I'm kind of a neat freak when I cut like too. my palette. I have my palette organized, and um, I can't stand like like for it's funny because my wife is the complete opposite. Um, when she paints, 
she her easel I mean her palette is like a disaster. It's just I, I it makes me go crazy. I'm like, how in the world is so unorganized? And then she'll be covered in paint. She'll have it in her hair, on her face, all over the place. Um, her brushes are a disaster. Yeah. But then, and she paints very quickly. And she's it's just such a different approach where I'm like, everything is very, like, anal. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> this, during this time, like, because I used to be able to be in my own headspace when I worked during the day when the kids were in school. And... Um, I mean, I'm, I do share custody with their dad. So on the days that they're with their dad, I'm able to kind of, um, delve into my work without distractions, but yeah. with the, and I know so many parents are, are dealing with this, but now I have to be able to get back into painting, go help my kids get back into, you know what I mean? So like, I feel like I'm jumping all over the place. So my, the first couple of weeks, I actually was like very, unnerved and frustrated and kind of angry by it because I wasn't able to get to the place that I need to get to work. And it yeah. was really frustrating, but now I've kind of gotten into the swing of things and I'm yeah. a lot more Zen about it. <laughs> I might Adapting. be drinking a little bit more wine than usual. <laughs> yeah. And by a little, I mean a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been trying to, I've been trying to watch the wine intake as well, but it's so convenient right now. He's like, I'm watching it go. In. I deserve, <laughs> I deserve the. Oh yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, I deserve it. I deserve the. You know that. Yeah. That's, that's what have, you tell yourself. Like, hey. I have a mimosa. Because it's the, Thursday. The world's fucked. I might as well just drink all the time. Yeah. Um. So, how much? Oh, I have a couple questions that I was thinking when you were talking about with your kids and everything. But like, you with with your process. Are you before I, I get into that? I guess, like for example, this fish piece. Do you pre-sketch these designs uh, smaller, uh, and then like transfer them, or do you kind of start just right on the the panel with everything? It depends. Sometimes I, I'll do that so that way I can uh, I'll do a sketch to figure out like the composition if I'm struggling with that, or I'll play around with it in Photoshop. Um, but I just go direct. I just yeah. directly draw it on, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. See, yeah. that's a, that, that's the thing too. Like my wife does that. She's more like she gets the canvas and she'll just start blocking things in. I am like, again, totally anal about it. Like I will, like, okay, I'm gonna paint on this canvas size, so I'm gonna work on my composition, my sketch, and to, so it fits that size. I print it out, I transfer it, so it's just perfect. Yeah, no, I'll uh, transfer too. I think <laughs> transferring is awesome, especially if like that way. If and doing the drawing beforehand also helps because like it kind of gets you familiar with everything. Yeah. But I'll even, you know, yeah. Transferring makes it go so much faster if you're trying to get super precise. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, it drives me nuts. I've done it the other way before and I'm just like, this is, there's no reason for this. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. just funny. I mean, you're redrawing while you're painting anyway. Cause yeah. like when I teach my painting from the photo classes or draw, well, no, not drawing, but painting from the photo classes, I have all my students transfer because no matter what, you're still redrawing, and we're really focusing on color. And so, if you just want to get things knocked out, you just yeah, transferring. Well, yeah, I mean, like even in the transfer, I don't know about you, but for for me, it, it's it's I don't. It's not like I'm tr drawing every single thing. It's like right. more like just like key places, so I don't yeah. lose my position because it doesn't yeah. make sense. Like you said, you're redoing it anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So the other thing I was going to ask is typically like how long does it does something like that take you? Um, just this or just your other, like your lace paintings too. Yeah. Uh, they seem depends, crazy. Depends, yeah. <laughs> um, it depends, I guess, on the, the scale of the work. And some pieces take longer than others because like if I have jewelry in it or there's other intricate things. This one actually, I mean, but I work full days too. I typically get up around five or six in the morning before anybody else is awake. And I go into the studio and I work. Um, and I also have one of my those Peloton bikes. So I squeeze that in, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> During the day, also, I'm obsessed with that. Uh, and that's actually a really important process of my work day because I get all of my ideas when I'm working out, all of them. Oh, I write cool. notes. And so it's a it's a big part of how I find my inspiration with my ideas. Some of my ideas are stupid, but, you know, I got to write them down anyway. Um, no, that's the way. Yeah. That's funny. But, 
what was the question again? <laughs> oh, just like how long it typically takes. Uh, oh, yeah. Just for so this, yeah, I mean, I guess I work, I don't know, between six and nine hours a day on a, on a painting. And if I need a painting to dry, I'll put it aside and work on something else. Yeah. Um, but typically, I like to work on one, one or two pieces and get them pretty finished as opposed to multiple pieces not quite finished. Um, just because that's how my head space is. But like this one only took me maybe a week and a half, which is fairly quick. But I think it was just because it's different than painting a portrait. You know, I don't have to do multiple layers on the fish quite so much as I do on a on a portrait. And I've been yeah. doing some other 30 inch. This is a 30 inch um, circle. My other 30 inch circles took me between, I don't know, three or three to four weeks. And some of it is because the drawing takes so long because I want to get a pretty accurate drawing down with the lace that takes me a couple of days to do. And then the painting obviously takes some time as well. So, um, yeah. So how do you work that out with clients? Like when, when, a, you know, I'm, that's something I've been curious about. Um, cause like for traditional pieces, when I'm asked to do a, a, like an oil, um, you know, sometimes they want it like yesterday and it's like, well, it doesn't quite work that way for me with oils. Like I, I kind of take my time and, and then, Sometimes it takes way longer <laughs> than I thought yeah. it was going to take. Well, you get a lot so. of commissions because you work a lot with magazines. So you have a lot of deadlines. I don't have any clients. The only time I did was Time Magazine when I did yeah. the first That was event. awesome, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Cool. Was, it was yeah. a lot of fun to do. I was like so honored that they even asked me, that they even knew my work. But yeah. um, I was a little nervous. And then I was like, I know how like much I work on a painting. And I know how fast I can paint. So they gave me 10 days for a little painting. I was like, I can do that. That's fine. Yeah. But I was teaching also. So I actually traveled to Dallas, taught and did the painting. It was just, it was a little bit insane. Um, but usually my clients, like she was super simple for me. I don't do, I don't do a lot of commissions. I actually do sometimes get commissions for me to paint a lace piece and they don't get the choice of what I'm going to paint. They just yeah. say, I want a black lace or a white lace and I have them pay half down. And then when I'm done, they yeah. pay the rest and I send it off. So I think most of my clients have never been strict on a, on time, which is good for me because that would probably put me in a really funky mental space. Yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the thing. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I did some, uh, portrait oil portrait commissions not that long ago that were, it, it, it got to that point where it was really stressful. Cause it's like, they want it. I'm like, like so fast. I'm like, listen, first of all, I have to let this section dry. I can't, I have to wait yeah. before I can work on it. And so I can't just finish this right now. And yeah. so I'm working, I'm working on this other section, but you know, it's going to, you know, I, it's not going to be tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Um, but well, that's, also that you want to be able to varnish it or put your yeah, final exactly. glaze on it. So that when they get it, it's not like all sunk in and they're like, well, what? <laughs> that's another thing that, that happened with that particular job was they were wanting the painting wake like they're like we we need the painting we need to have it um here by this date and i was like that i still have to varnish it like yeah you can't you know so it's it's funny how you know you try to explain you try to explain yeah. and um and then they said the, the the funny thing was is they had commissioned me because they had hired someone else to, to paint some portraits for them years ago that didn't turn out very well yeah and um i even actually redid one of the portraits um and then some new ones, but they were like trying to tell me like, oh, we've done this. It's my daughter singing, I think. Um, we've done this before, and it's never taken this long um, for the you know for this stage. And I'm like, well, I'm I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's this is how long it's gonna take because otherwise it's, it's gonna be ruined. Like, oh, that would be like, so frustrating. They were comparing you to another person. Oh. Like, well, we've we've worked with artists before, and it doesn't take this long. And I'm like, you're like, well. This is how I. I'm a different artist. <laughs> like, there's a reason why I do, like, like when I do oil commissions, I basically just say, "Hey, listen, um, you know, it's it's the way I do it is same thing, like half up front, um, and then I get the the, the remaining half when I'm finished. Um, but if they want me to solely focus on their painting, I need the full amount straight up front, and then I'll just focus on your painting." Other than, than that, leave me alone because yeah. I have other things I have to do, right? Yeah, so that's a great point. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, and, and that's what I've. It's, that's the funny part is they're like, um, man, this is taking a little bit longer than we were hoping. I'm like, that's because you didn't pay the full amount, so I have to take on other jobs 
in order yeah. to get by, right? That's a good so, point. yeah. So if you want me to to finish your painting, just pay me the rest now, and then I'll just focus on your painting. Yeah. So that 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 aspect of it is, um, uh, like, always. That's the worst part about. Yeah. <laughs> about like, I hate it. I hate like. You know, when it comes to to you know the business side of being an artist, that's just the part that sucks. You know. Yeah. Like I, I don't There's know so about many, you, but yeah, we have to be multifaceted as far yeah. as artists. Like you can't just paint. There's so many other things you have to do oh, to be yeah. able to survive. And so, like David and I are going to be teaching online now, but um, yeah, commissions are tough. They can. I love doing commissions. Yeah. But I also charge more than I would for a regular painting <laughs> yeah. because I'm doing something in it for them in a different way you know what i mean and so i don't think a lot of people realize the time it takes to do a painting and so when you give them the price they're like whoa and you're yeah. like okay well so first of all if you were going you know the amount of time it would take me to do this painting i need to pay my bills you know what i mean as exactly. you know you know and yeah. it's a it's a real struggle <laughs> yeah. it's just funny i mean it's just like that with um you know it's it's the same thing with you know, there's like I take on private commissions um, that that are even digital paintings that yeah. you know someone hires me. They want to do painting, um, and the same thing goes to it's like, hey, listen, while you know, I, I always let them know, like, you know, I'm working on your painting, but I might get a magazine cover or something, and if I do, yeah. that's my priority. Yeah. So it, it gets, and that that thing that I hate is that's when things start getting backed up and you're like oh no yeah <laughs> like i have so many deadlines now and uh but um i mean that's just the way that's part of it yeah like, I, I can't remember who i was talking to recently but like i get i don't even want to like I, I don't like dealing with bills or um all that kind of stuff i my my wife just takes i'm like listen i'll i'll do the paintings and focus on my deadlines but all that yeah. other stuff is just like yeah noise. i do all of it Oh, I see, that drives me nuts. Like everything, oh. I take care of everything. <laughs> <laughs> is David the same way though? Like, does that over? Is that overwhelming? Because I mean, for me, it is. Like, I just he just, like, he just paints, you know. Yeah. He paints, and we also have been uh, brainstorming on how to make our online teaching more efficient and um, really high resolution. So again like when I was on my bike I was like there's got to be a way to make zoom be able to m share cameras and so I started researching that and I told David I was like we need to get this e-cam blah blah so we like together we kind of came up with this really beautiful structure for us to be able to um have two screens for people to see what we're working on and be able to give them feedback so I'm testing it out tomorrow I'm teaching my first two-day workshop and so and then he's two weeks later going to be teaching a four-day workshop so we're really um, out. I think it. I think I'm better at multitasking. I think that's just maybe women are just better at it. So I would be stressed <laughs> out honestly if he was the one taking care of the bills because I'd be all, I'd be all be like, hey, did you pay the bill? Did you do this? Did you? Because I'm always the one like, hey, it's trash day and hey. And so like, he has his things. <laughs> I have my things. We've like yeah. made it work out. Yeah. He just he wants to focus on just painting now. So. And now I think he's really excited about sharing um, uh, his process and being able to figure out how to teach online efficiently, which in turn makes us not have to travel so much when we're able to travel. If we're able to teach more online, so that way we can work on what we need to at home and be home as opposed to traveling all the time for teaching. So Yeah, that's awesome, though. I think yeah. that's the way to do it. You know, It's smart, yeah. too, because, I mean, traveling's fun. And it's cool. We, lo places, we do love it. But, yeah. But like being but able gets, to do that is so nice. That's, yeah. That's it's awesome. hard for me to leave the kids all the time. And I do love traveling because I get to meet people and I like teaching in person. But this will also be a great way for people to have access to taking a workshop where they don't have to pay for flights and yep. they don't have to pay for a hotel room and they don't have to pay to eat out all the time because taking a workshop costs so much money for the student, which is an experience and you'll always remember that experience and you'll get to see it live. But this way we can try to give access in a way that's more, you know, that's e a little bit easier. No, for I people. think that's great. That's awesome. <clears throat> that's really cool. Um, yeah. yeah I'm, I was going to tell you, I have my uh, Peloton bike behind Johnny cash here. <laughs> that's, oh, why yeah. got, that's why I've got you Johnny cash covering it up. Yeah, I do. Um, it's nice. I, I really love riding bike in general. Like, um, yeah. 
I, I don't do it as much. Uh, the reason I got the, the Peloton is because it's the last couple times I, I rode my bike in the city, I almost got hit by a car, and it those, the last time really freaked me out. There's a really nice path close by, but you have to drive ride through the city to get there, and it was like a really close call, and I was just like, yeah. So then I stopped riding bike for a little bit because I was genuinely just like freaked. Um, it was pretty close. I almost got oh, run so over. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I mean, thankfully nothing happened, but I was like pretty shooken up about it. But, um, and then, uh, you know, then it, it was like, it's like winter time and you don't feel like. It, yeah. Bundling you know, up to go outside and freeze so, your face. <laughs> so my, my wife got, got the, the bike and, uh, I love it. It's fun. Um, like I, lately I've been, cause I do like the videos, you know, yeah. um, but lately I've been, I'd love to just put on a podcast and just, yeah. just ride and yeah, get lost, lost in the podcast and just yeah. listen. Yeah. Well, David, David, we, I got a, he got an elliptical cause he just was getting bored on the bike and he mm. just kind of wants to just be on there watching a movie, you know, yeah. and I do the classes. So he's usually sleeping when I take the class. I have my headphones in and he hears me like wheezing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my That's God. Awesome. Like I'm, I am, I'm kicked my own butt. Uh, but it, it actually, it's been hard though sometimes to get lost in that mental space. Cause you're just like, it's like groundhog's day, you know? <laughs> so you're just it's actually kind of surprising just to me how difficult it, or like, because like when she, when she first was like, "Hey, I'm going to get this bike," I'm like, oh, "Man, is that really like a workout?" But dude, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they keep you, your butt. Yeah. yeah, they're like, "Okay, now get to 60 resistance and sprint." You're like, "No, that's not yeah. that's not going to happen." <laughs> you know when that's when I first happen. got mine too, the um, it it I just had like the, the the pedals that you need to have the shoes that click in. Yeah, Do you have those. Yeah. yeah. Um, I never got those, so for the first time, I for the first while, I just was having to ride. You, on those, oh, like, that's weird, so weird. It, yeah, it's so hard to do it. But yeah. uh, recently, I got the I got like new pedals that have like the straps over, so you can just put oh, your feet okay. in and yeah. lift up and push down. It's way it's way better now. Yeah. I like riding around in Italy, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, because the outdoor ride that's so <laughs> yeah. rad. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So, um, you're um, are you? I remember what David was telling me too. I was, you know about his commissions or not even commissions, but are you doing a lot of paintings as well that where you just work on paintings and then you kind of show them, do you have like galleries that you guys show to or, or is it mostly, so, I don't do very many commissions. Honestly, I actually do just my own work and I yeah. have three galleries that I show in. I show in Santa Fe, I show in Park City, Utah. I show in the, well, I just started showing in the New York city gallery and hopefully she stays open. It's a great gallery. It's called stone sparrow gallery. And it's this mm. really cool, contemporary space they've been open for only a year so it's a really new space in greenwich village i'm like fingers crossed that she yeah can keep her doors open because i was really excited to start showing in a, in a gallery in new york yeah, uh, but for sure her, i mean actually most of my sales though come from instagram i sell i that's I'll awesome small paintings and um i have a great collector base on instagram and social media so um, I'm really thankful for those collectors because I've been able to consistently sell over the past few months just through people following my work. Um, mm. So I'm in my mind, I'm going to be painting a lot more smaller paintings just because I think they're a little bit more affordable. I mean, they're still expensive, but they're easier to be able to purchase for the price point, you know, and I spend a lot of time on them. So they're really beautiful little, little paintings, but um yeah, I, I have a lot of paintings and galleries, and but right now I'm holding on to a lot of them just because I need to make the money to sell. You know, since I'm not teaching quite as much, I used to teach in my studio to teens and adults, and since I'm not doing that, I need to supplement that income somehow by making little collectible pieces for people to want to buy. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, I don't know if people are buying from galleries right now just because. I don't know if galleries have so many other artists that they show too. So they show all these other artists for me. I feel like Instagram and social media is my gallery. Mm -hmm. So I tr really try to push the work as much that's as I can. That's great though. That's, that's, I mean, that's one of the positives for sure about social media yeah. type stuff. Um, do you, uh, with, with your, uh, the commissions, like what you were talking about earlier with your ideas, like, coming up with ideas like you'll think about ideas when you're on the bike it's 
the one thing that's in, that I find interesting is, um, you know, if you're going to be doing like gallery type work, uh, you, 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 you've obviously got to come up with, um, excuse me, like a unique voice, um, uh, something that's going to, you know, stick with people and resonate. Um, and I, I can see a lot of artists, um, you can see they're, they're trying too hard. They're yeah. doing weird shit. It's like, like I can see that you can paint very well, but what are you doing? Like, oh yeah, like weird oh my gosh. things, and you're like, God, um, is that something that you think about? Because, you know, it to to think of an idea, something that you know, hey, listen, you already, you know, you can paint, yeah, but the, but the but the idea and the story, so coming up with sort of like a series or something, can kind of be tricky, right? Because you want to make sure that it's it's you, it's your voice, but it's not stupid <laughs> right you yeah I mean? no absolutely I think that took me a while to try to make work that's non-obvious if I have a story to it so if I'm doing something with some sort of surrealistic element or something extra that I'm trying to be non-obvious you know I I feel like because I have a consistency with my the tonality of my work mm -hmm. and I do a lot of fi female figures and lace um I'm supposed to have a solo show or a dual show in New York next year so my whole idea was going to be these these um i was going to do a lot of the circles they were going to be like little cropped images of like a peephole into a per like a, this intimate moment of of a woman and whatever not like not creepy but you know of like her like holding <laughs> yeah. herself or um sitting there contemplating but that way people and i like the idea of not having the faces i, I love painting faces but i want people to connect yeah. with it outside of having to see the person's face. So, um, you know, ideas come to me through my personal stories too, or people that have inspired me. Yeah. Um, and so I, a lot of my work is just storytelling within whatever it is that is going on in my life. Um, I'm going to be painting a couple of paintings of me holding my children. I'm not allowed to paint my kids, but you won't see their faces. So I'm, going to be and I like this idea of this intimacy of a parent holding a child yeah. and uh I think though you know I think right now is the time to paint work that gives people an escape um makes them feel something positive so that's kind of since this has happened my whole shift of where my work was headed as far as like social commentary has changed into something where I just want to make these beautiful pieces that people feel good seeing Mm -hmm. so I think that's what happens with like these small little lace pieces they're just these beautiful delicate little paintings that you know just make you feel good when you see them so that's kind of my goal over the next couple of months because because now I don't know about galleries or what's going to happen yeah. over the next you know what I mean I feel yeah. like now I have to be my own curator at the moment to just stay true to who I am as an artist and keep you know, I want people to see my work and know it's my work. Well, plus That's the galleries, of... they take a pretty huge percentage, don't they? I mean, I'm yeah. not as familiar with that aspect of things. I haven't really done galleries. It's like 50%, yeah. Yeah. I've heard even 70% in some places. Oh, no. No way. And I don't know yeah. who does that. That's a stupid idea. No, yeah, my, well, really my dad, um, my dad was, um, there was a gallery. I can't remember. if It might have been a New York gallery, but. I think they told him like 70%. He was like, uh, no. no. Yeah, you're doing all the work. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You it's know? like, okay, I don't mind if it's 70%, but the painting is, is a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. If you sell it. selling that, yeah. I have an idea for one of your intimate paintings, okay? Yeah, yeah. You're looking, you're looking through a little peephole. Yeah. <laughs> and a woman just got done taking a shower, okay? Yeah. Now, it's not creepy at all, okay? You're peeping through. <laughs> she just got done taking a shower, and she's got a robe on, and right. her hair wrapped in a towel. But you can't really see her face because it's turned side. And she's clipping her toenails. <laughs> and there's like just like little toenails, on, a couple on but the I ground. But I think I think it'd be so much better if she's wearing lace, clipping her toenails. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Just like clipping her toenails, wearing this beautiful lace dress. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's like the towel on the road, that's just like, that's obvious. But the lace okay. dress, All that's right. shocking. There, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I was trying to like not make it as creepy, but. 
Because, it, like, in my mind, it seems creepier now. <laughs> Beginning <laughs> yeah. started creepy. Oh, I mean, even saying they're like little peepholes, but I don't know because they're circles. They just feel like you're seeing, like, you know, if you're looking into yeah. this like little story, it does sound creepy though. So it's funny. My <laughs> my wife cannot stand when I cut my toenails. She gets so <laughs> mad at me. I get mad at David too. And it's like, what? what, what how am I supposed to never cut them? Like she's like, it's just gross. And are you you better sweep that up right away? I'm of course I'm gonna sweep it up right away. But it's just like. I, where am I supposed I to do it? David like, does go, it in the studio. I'm like, go to the bathroom and clip your toenails. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's location. That's the problem. It's all location. <laughs> You're in the bathroom. You can clip your nails all you want. Yeah, because I'll sit there like in the living room and like and clip my that's toenails. <laughs> but I'm going to clean that's it up why. right away. I'm going to clean it up that's as soon why. as I'm done. But... It's because you're clipping them in the living room. It's the sound. <laughs> It is funny. <laughs> yeah, you should. You could do another one with just the sanding, like yeah. you know. So. Oh yeah, David hates if I like if I'm doing my nails and doing you know. He's like, ah, oh, that sound. It's horrible. Last night, I don't know if you saw. I I, I shared the pictures, but last night my 16 year old was like, you know, Dad, can I give you a makeover? I saw it. <laughs> you look so good. I know. David goes, you should do your makeup like that for tomorrow. <laughs> I was actually telling her, wouldn't it be funny if I had my makeup like that for a podcast and I don't even I don't acknowledge it. I just go there and do it. And but the funny thing was is I didn't know what she was doing to me until it was done. And my two That's my amazing. two year old was terrified. Like she would she wouldn't come near me and she was like like, you know, she just looked so worried. Like she was like, Dad, you know, like freaking out. She's but, like, You don't like this, do you, Dad? You know, uh, man maybe three years ago or something like that. It was our last apartment. I think both of my daughters did makeup on me at the same time, um, if I remember correctly. And it was like the whole thing. Oh, I think it was half. One of them did half and one, you know, and my, my youngest daughter at the time, my, it wasn't my youngest, she did my half of my face to look like David Bowie. And she did like this really cool David Bowie makeup. And then my oldest daughter did like some glam thing. And they had friends over having an overnight and they were painting my nails and everything. And I'm just like, whatever, I don't care. You know, they're having a blast and I kept it on. We're watching a movie. I'm just sitting there and they, every once in a while, you know, they'll say something and I, but I totally forgot about it. And I <laughs> went to take my dog out for a walk <laughs> and we, we lived really close to Lake Michigan and I walked right to the lake and there's like this really nice park where I like to sit in the rocks and just watch the water crashing. So I'm sitting there with my dog and he's looking at the water and I'm sitting there. And then this guy comes and he sits down right next to me. And he's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, oh, how are you doing, man? We talked for like 20 minutes just talking about whatever, life, whatever else. He doesn't once say anything. <laughs> Nothing. That's amazing. And, and I didn't – again, like I did not realize. So I get home. I walk into the bathroom and I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> I start laughing so hard and they're like, what's going on? I'm like, and I tell them the story. I'm like, this guy, like, what? He must have just thought I was out of my mind. Like, because it looked so crazy. <laughs> it was like, That's so funny. It's like, oh man. And I'm, and I'm talking to him like, like, I'm surprised. You know what would have been even funnier? I used to smoke uh, like a pipe all the time. It would have been so funny if I had my pipe. Like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, Who's this lunatic? Oh my gosh! Yeah, so that's fine. I, I, to be honest, like I don't think that's it's that weird of a thing. Like, uh, it's funny reading the comments. I shared the photos yesterday because I just thought it was hilarious. Because again, like I had no idea what kind of makeup job she was giving me. Um, but she did you know, good. She, yeah, she, she was having fun. She was just playing and like, and she was like, "What?" Well, she was showing me like, "Hey, what color do you think um I should use for this or that?" I'm like. I don't know what I look like right now. How you you choose? And she's like, okay, I think this would be great. So she was just having a blast, making fun of me, of course, saying, "Man, your eyebrows are the worst," because um, I have like no eyebrow hair. Like, and she she was like using some wax and stuff, and I'm like, um, and I I was just like, she was listening to some music that I thought was cool. I don't know what it was exactly, but, um, but I, I remember just commenting me like, oh, I I love the smell of makeup. It smells like color pencils, you know. And, <laughs> She's just like, dad, you know, <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, yeah I, was, used to be a makeup, I used to be a makeup artist when I was uh, in college for my undergrad. I worked for Mac Makeup. Oh, and, uh, I'm familiar yeah. with Mac. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Having girls, all girls. <laughs> yeah. um, I loved it. I thought it was so much fun to do. It was like, obviously, it's like painting on the face. Yeah. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. I had one guy who used to come in all the time for me to do his makeup drag, which I loved. And I work at my, I lived, I used to live in Austin, Texas. And so the uh, Mac makeup company that I worked for was inside Saks Fifth Avenue. Mm. And so I found it greatly entertaining when there was a guy sitting there and all like the shoppers are walking by like, oh my God, <laughs> someone's doing this guy's makeup. And then he would walk out dressed like a dude, fabulous makeup on. That's funny. It was really, it was really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I used to, uh, I was just telling my daughter yesterday how, uh, like I was, I, I was in punk rock bands, um, like 20 years ago and I used to put makeup on like yeah. for, for fun. Like I would have like, we just call it guy liner. Yeah. Um, and sometimes like paint my fingernails or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, that's pretty much it, you know? And, um, I remember someone at, I don't remember. It's 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 been so long, but I remember someone saying mentioning something because we were playing at like a some kind of a Christian venue. Uh, I don't remember if, if it was a church or some some place like a gymnasium or something. Uh, and they th there was a warning that you know, just to warn the children the children coming to this punk rock show that they might see some things that might make them feel uncomfortable. And then they <laughs> oh, the, they described. That the that the boys wear makeup and it's like, but there's only just two of us I think that actually wore we wore eyeliner. It's like, it's so funny like thinking about it like, but that You're was like, like okay. late '90s. It was like oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, so crazy. That's awesome. That's but so um, funny. yeah, it whatever. It's fun. I, like I think it's fun. It was so funny. Like I get comments. Um, uh you know, from that photo of yesterday that I put up of people, you know, most people are like, Oh, that's a cool dad to do that. I'm like, Oh, you know, whatever. It's, I'm, yeah. I love, it's fun. Like who, who yeah. cares? it's not a big deal. And then some people are just like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> like they're so, they're so weird about it. You know? Yeah. You're like, all right, bye. I did. I, know, uh, I, I get rid of like, I've gotten rid of so many followers through them saying stupid things. But I'm just like, I don't even want to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to block them. I get, I get a lot of uh, sexist comments, of, on the, especially on Instagram. Oh, my God. Of, uh, you're a woman. You shouldn't be painting. Or, why are you stealing what your man does? Or, oh my you know, God. like, just saying <laughs> terrible things to me. And so I'm like, okay, bye. I don't, you know, at first I'll argue. And then a bunch of people will say stuff. Because they're like, holy moly, this guy's a dick. Yeah, and so then I'll just let them rant on him, and then then I block him. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, that's crazy. So you actually get people that um, attack you for painting because you're a woman. Yeah, like, I've that's... had people attack me for painting because I'm a woman. I have people tell me that I'm stealing what David does. I have people just say, yeah, all sorts of just just things. just like yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but like to I'm like, I oh, totally I am. David paints lace dresses too. That's so crazy. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that'd be funny. Well, it wouldn't be funny. It, it's funny to me to think about it. But if he comes into the studio one day and he's doing one of these, you know, survival paintings, and it's just changed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this old Jewish lady with just lace, and you can with see through on. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This makes it a whole different. Job. There you go. There's a new idea for you for yeah. a solo show. Yeah. Yeah. Old ladies <laughs> naked under a lace. Yes. That's I like it. my next solo show. I think it's great. I really like that <laughs> idea. Um, I think it would be really beautiful, though. That would be, that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be a whole other challenge of like trying to get the skin underneath oh. the lace. <laughs> I love it. Like, one of my favorite painters um, is Jenny Seville. I love Jenny Seville. Oh, yeah. Seville. Oh, my gosh. Oh, she's incredible. You know, and the I I would love to meet her one day and I would love to talk to her. I'd love to have her on the podcast. Mm -hmm. I have like reached out to different galleries and trying to get I cannot figure out how to get a hold of her. Um she's probably day, not even on social media. You know? Exactly. She's not. She's not. She um, need to be. No, but she's she's one of those painters that I just man, I just love it. But I love the same thing. Like I love uh artists that aren't afraid to just paint what is you know like yeah. when it comes to like the human form 
Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's so beautiful. Um, yeah. Like, I, I think it was in, gosh, like 2012 or something like that. Um, my wife and I were in, um, we were dating at the time, but I was in London to do some kind of, I think it was a schools and workshop. And then we took extra time since we were there and we, we went to uh, Wales for a few days, which is where my family's from. So I, I wanted to see the Wales. It was beautiful. And then we went up to Scotland and we were in uh, Edinburgh, I think Edinburgh. Yeah, that's that, yeah, that's where it was. And they had this, the National Portrait Gallery show exhibit there. Um, and I don't know, I don't think, I don't think David was in that show. Um, but, um, Aaliyah Chapin, that was oh, where yeah. I first met or I didn't meet her, but I first came aware of her work. She had a painting and it was, it was the one that won the show. It was, yeah. I think, of her aunt or whatever. Beautiful. Yeah. I haven't seen it in person, but it's beautiful. And, um, well, it was the, as soon as I walked in to the show, there was like giant paintings that were just <laughs> hyper realistic. I remember this, this one oil painting, it was, and this goes back to the painterly thing. Like this one painting was that you could not, even when you got to this close to it, you could not see one brush stroke. It just yeah. looked like a print. And I couldn't believe that it was an original oil painting. There was no brushwork. So I was super blown away and impressed by the technique, but yeah. completely bored by, it's like, wow, that's, it's a little bit, you know, where's the touch, you know, yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a personal taste, whatever. But then I go around the corner and I see that piece um, by Leah. And what, what I really loved about it was how thick in painter it was like so thick, but also just I just loved because I didn't I never really saw that before. Like yeah. I loved it a, a painting of a woman that's just real, you know, yeah. and not like this glam thing or yeah, whatever. She's and it was so just good at that. The the skin tones and yeah, but yeah, but you should you should do that with the like. I'm I'm telling you that lace, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Like you got to do it in a way that seems so natural. Yeah. Like, like she's like sitting in a rocking chair, you know, with a cup of tea or something. Yeah. And maybe one nipple is just popping just, out. I mean, <laughs> you don't totally know. Or just rocking it all like sexy. You know what I mean? Like it'll, you know, because like when I'm in my seventies, I'm gonna pose the same as I do now. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that's that's part of the fun of, uh, you know, because I mean, it, it is interesting because, you you know, you haven't seen that, that kind of a thing. You know, I haven't seen that kind of a thing. I think that'd be great. But then you have to like find the people to pose for you. you yeah. Know? And like, how do you get them to like, you know, yeah. There's, I have a lot of bad thoughts going in my head right now. <laughs> like I was thinking, I was, I was thinking right away. I'm like, well, you, you, you can find people that have dementia, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm like that J bad, Jason, bad, naughty. That's not nice. It's terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> my mind is corrupt. Um, <laughs> anyways, speaking of corrupt minds, uh, there's people that have done drawings and paintings of you. And, oh. uh, I thought that right now would probably be a good time to show you. Um, yeah, and, uh, so yeah, let me, uh, share my screen with you. Let me know if you see this. Um, hold on one second. Okay. Do you see this? Like what? Oh. Good. oh my God, that's amazing. I have such a Jew nose. I'm Jewish, by the way, so I can say that. <laughs> I was going to say, whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's so great. This is by Jacques Lamoni. That's so great. <laughs> yeah. No, I like I like his. Uh, it's it's nice because it's a it's a. It's he like totally a subtle... got my forehead. My forehead is so like that. <laughs> so great. Yeah, it's it's a nice subtle caricature, which is fun. Yeah, yeah, that's so fun. And let's see, this one had I was dying last. Saw this one. <laughs> oh my god! Look at David. I'm than David. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take a. I'm gonna mean, like hold on. I'm gonna photograph that. That is so yeah. funny. I'll 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 email. <laughs> okay. Him. Okay. Good. <laughs> this is by Dominic Zeilinger, by the way. That's, that's awesome. This is like the best. That, that's where David of is <laughs> on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> uh, I I this one this, this one Dominic. You totally killed this one. I love it. Oh, so funny, man. I mean, what cracks me up is this is why I love good caricature stuff. And by the way, I don't ask people to do caricature. Just do a drawing. Yeah. Of 
A lot of people end up doing caricature. But what I I love about this one is like it's just a sliver and it's enough. It's all you need. No, because he parts his hair in the middle and pushes it back and his glasses. It's so great. (laughs) (laughs) And he did a really great job with you too. It's very, it's all very subtle, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Really funny. (laughs) So good. Um, This one, this is. This is by Kevin Nealon, by the way. Yeah. And uh, I thought he nailed uh, like the cheekbones. And that he did. Awesome. I know. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I, I, mean, I love that my lip. He made my lips thicker. I love <laughs> it. No, it looks good. You know, the, the thing is, is it's I hear people say this all the time. And I'm interested in your perspective on this, being that you're uh, you're one of those female artists. Like, how dare you be an artist? Um, but <laughs> like, I always I hear a lot of people talk about women being more difficult to draw and paint. Um, I don't typically feel that way. Um, I either, yeah. I I just think I don't know. Like, I, I tend to try if, if I'm doing caricature and I have my I have freedom. I tend to try to push things with women because it's a challenge to like see yeah. where I can take it. Um, yeah. um, but I don't know. I don't. I, it, it's. I think it's. It's kind of a, suge- a subjective thing. Uh, you know, some people just may, might be a little bit more challenging than others. But yeah. But, but what I, love I like the color in this. This color is so great. Oh yeah. No, there's a lot of nice color in there. That's the thing too. Is there's there's a nice uh, f- like. F- because it's a, it's I like that in caricature when not only is is the are the features, you know, pushed, but the colors pushed as well. Yeah, you know, I am um, no, you know, with women though, what I lo- I love painting women obviously, and I and I know all the women that I paint. Um, I like capturing the strength within the women. That's mm-hmm. what my goal is: is to make the women more empowering. Um, so, I think it's a, a lot of fun to to do. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I don't know. Like I said, it's, it, I guess it's, it's, it's up to everyone how they, like some people have a difficult time drawing children or babies or, um, but, uh, you know, to me, I don't know if you can relate to this too. It's just, I kind of, especially with painting, it's just, for me, it's all about just shapes of value and color. And I'm not necessarily thinking about, like who the person is really. So, I mean, I do obviously, but you know, you know what I mean? Like when it comes to the painting process, yeah, you're, it, yeah, it's all about shapes, color, distances, the, a lot of squinting, you know, trying to make sure the values are correct yeah. outside of the whole complexity of like, what are you saying with the portrait or painting or whatever? Um, when you're just talking about the process of painting, um, yeah, I would say I don't individualize it as far as like I'm painting a young person, I'm painting an old person, I'm painting fabric, whatever it is. It's the same mindset as far as like, okay, what color is this? What value is this? What am I seeing here? Yeah. Yeah, right for through. sure. But anyways, this is an awesome one. Yeah. Um, this is pretty funny too. This is by I love it. Um, Esmadi Abdullah. I love it. <laughs> is it just me or does... I see a little bit of J Lo in this. Or, a I little. Think. I was about to say I look Latina. <laughs> a little bit look like a, you know what? I will. I would look like J Lo any day if I could. She looks <laughs> hot. She's a hottie. Yeah, Man. and and yeah. she's she's looking good. She's like fifty, right? right. Yes. It's pretty. I want to look like I know. I want to look that good. Dude, look if I, people. even as a man, if I somehow looked like J Lo at fifty, I'd be <laughs> totally fine with that. <laughs> that's right and your daughter could do your makeup <laughs> yeah <laughs> this may be this where so i'm great. headed yeah <laughs> this is so great i love it I uh, this is a watercolor by uh david watson nice watercolor is tough yeah that's cool. cool it's interesting let's see the hard pose i gave you hard poses <laughs> No, I thought they were good. I w- that's one thing. Like I was, I was interested about it is to see what people were going to do because th- th- they were more like like the ones of you. Um, I think you're just like at a table or in a cafe or something. It's just like a natural type. Hey, I'm just sitting at a table. It's not typically something you give someone to draw from. So 
yeah. I, I was curious to see how that was going to challenge. Was, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oops. Uh, yeah, this one is by uh, Pierre Pregent. Pregent. Yeah, my cheekbones could kill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, you, you sort of look like a like a arrowhead or something. Like yeah, you know, like uh, or like. Do you remember the mask? Like the old movies. Oh with, uh, yeah, yeah, Jim Carrey. Yeah, with Jim Carrey. I you know if you, my face was green, I would look like the mask. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I like the I like the brushwork in this one. I like the elongated neck. You know, I my undergrads in fashion design. And uh, all of my the models I used to draw had real long necks. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Oh, uh, I know yeah. who did that. Did he get that to you late? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this one, first of all, I apologize because I normally don't allow hack artists um, to submit work. <laughs> this um, one's tight. It's tight. <laughs> yeah, this is it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, of course, this is by your lovely husband. Uh, yeah. David. Um, yeah, this is an awesome piece. This is really yeah. cool. You, I mean, it looks good on here, but in person. And, you know, and that's one thing that David does so beautifully is he gets texture, even in young skin, that is just super delicately done. Um, and you get close up and you get to see those brush strokes. It's really beautiful to see. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd, man, sometime, hopefully, I can, I'd love to visit you guys and see everything in person. Oh yeah, you're welcome. You and your wife yeah. and your and your children. My oh my god, my kids love little ones too. So, <laughs> oh man, yeah, I can't wait. We're actually um, we're actually sneaking away to a cabin this weekend that we found that's Good like out you. in the middle of nowhere in the woods. Social uh, distancing in in, a, in in the woods is perfect. Yeah, yeah, we cannot wait. All week we've been just like, when is Friday gonna come? Um, I can't wait. We're just gonna go out there and and uh, I don't even know what that feels out. like. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna go for walks in the woods, and they let you can bring That's a dog, right. so we're bringing our dog, so it's gonna be nice. That's so, so nice. Yeah, we just paint all the time. That's it. Yeah, no, it's gonna be so cool. Uh, let me see. I'm going to tell me if if I'm back. You're back. Well, I see. Yeah, there you're back. Okay. You're back. okay. Cool. That's awesome. So thank you everybody for uh, submitting um, uh, yeah. drawings like that. And again, I apologize for that that David guy. I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> <laughs> cheat. No. So he, he didn't let he didn't let you know. He just like I thought he asked. He goes, Oh, I didn't get to submit. I was like, You're too late. So I just <laughs> That's so funny. Um so anyways, uh this has been fun talking. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me about all yeah. this kind of stuff. Um before uh we end up uh crashing this party, is there anything like I know this is a weird time, obviously. Like it's hard to like know what's going on and yeah you know, who's, what's going to open, what's not, but is there any, I mean, obviously I'd love for you to share your, all your social stuff with everybody, um, Instagram and so on, but is there anything that people can, uh, know that's coming up or even like the classes that you're doing? Like, is there, do you have signups yeah. coming up for that? Cause that'd be kind of cool. Yes. You know? So I'm, I'm, we're kind of, I'm waiting to schedule more workshops, which they will come after I see how this one flows just so I know if, I can add more students or how it works out, but, um, I will be doing, I have a workshop this weekend. I did just add on people who could just view the workshop. So if people are interested in that. They can sign up and just watch the workshop. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I will be setting up some more. I do critiques online. So if people are ever interested in getting critiques, I do like uh, 30 minute critiques once a week, four sessions. So I, I do paid critiques. Um, I would like to say that I have shows coming up. But they've all been canceled. <laughs> I yeah. have a painting in London. You know, so I have online shows. I have an online show with mall galleries, the portrait that I did. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess just keep on the lookout for new work. I'm constantly painting. I'm supposed to have a dual show in March of 2021. So hopefully that still holds true. Yeah. David and I are hopefully still teaching in October in Munich. He and I are doing a oh, doable nice. workshop. Yeah. So that's uh, October 9th, 10th, and 11th, I think, um, in Munich at Gallery Benjamin Eck. We're teaching in November. Um, again, another co-workshop in Dallas. I'm supposed to be teaching in July in my work, my studio, but I don't know if that's going to happen. 
Yeah. Um, I, a hand, no, I had to have to push. I've been pushing back on my workshops. So yeah, but stay tuned. Follow me on, uh, Instagram, Slevenson, S L E V E N S O N. I will update anytime that I'm opening up new workshops. I might be hosting a, on a online hand painting workshop since it looks like there won't be opportunities to travel for some time. So I'm opening up new opportunities for people to learn. Um, awesome. I have, I, I sell prints on my big cartel page. So if anyone wants a, an affordable print, reach out. <laughs> I think that's about that's it. Awesome. I mean, we're oh, literally that's awesome. just, it's Groundhog's Day. I, like I'm name, I'm renaming days. So like Wednesday is white wine day. So like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, I told you I'm drinking a lot more wine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm having a mimosa now and it tastes so good. So <laughs> Man, I um, I, I, it's for me. It's been it, 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 the same thing. It just feels like Twilight Zone, and the, like, man, a few days ago, I went to bed at like nine. I just was like, so you know, it's so uh, funny. That's I didn't even go to my bed. Norm, that's <laughs> my normal time. Like when life is normal, I go to bed at nine or nine thirty. Now. I go to bed at like 11. That is so unusual. Well, 10, 30, 11. I'm usually falling asleep on the couch because David and I are obsessed with Ozark. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah we love it. But we only watch it at night because during the day he watches what he watches. I watch what I watch. He's watching the news. And I'm like, put your headphones on. I don't want to listen to the news all day. <laughs> and I like, I'll watch yeah. whatever else else is on TV. So at night we sit down on the couch. We have a couple yeah. bottles of wine and we watch Ozark. And I, yeah. Ozark it is, is awesome. So it is so good. It's very, yeah, very know, good. Is like, I guess the one message I'd like to pass on to everybody is like, just stay inspired, be easy on yourself. You know, keep looking at art, keep uh, reaching out when you need to reach out to people. Like it's just a, it can be a lonely for time. Sure. You know? So this is for sure a time to reach out to people. And I've, I've been trying to reach back if someone, you know, just needs a friendly hello or whatever. So, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, you know, that's, I mean, <laughs> this is like the, the weirdest time for sure. I mean, there's so, we don't know, no one's ever experienced this, I mean, you know, none, none of us in our lifetime anyways. And uh, yeah, I, I just find that the best thing is to, to be as positive as possible. Yeah. Um, there's so much like BS going around. Um, and it's just like, for me, like I'm trying to, to just keep it. Cause again, like I've got a, I've got, you know, three daughters, number four in the way. And I, I try to like do my politics stuff or like not politics, but like I'll get up, have coffee and just, just see what happened while I was asleep. <laughs> like yeah. I'll just jump on the news. I do the same thing. The morning yeah. is when I watch it and then I'm done. Yeah, exactly. And then like every once like, in a while I'll read some things, but like I watch morning Joe, I love morning Joe or whatever's yeah. on, you know, and I'm just like, okay, all right, now I see what's happening. And then that's it. <laughs> yep. That's what I've been trying to do. And then and then I try to like the rest of the time. It's uh, it's you know, it's been a lot of Pixar movies with my two year old. She's totally into that right now. Oh, um, I love that. I, yeah, I love it. So do, she's like, do you envy you know, her like um, seeing it for the first time? Right. You know, I, you get so excited. You're like, oh, just wait. This is the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I spend most of the time watching her while she's watching the movie, and she's she's starting to like, you know, really feel emotional about things now. You um, cry. I oh yeah. My, my daughter cry for the first time well i mean i know she got emotional for certain things but we were watching some dog movie and i saw my daughter cry i mean not that she hasn't cried for things but yeah when she was like eight when she really grasped what was happening or she really got emotional like an adult would for an adult you know yeah. and i was like she's crying like i just you know watching the little <laughs> things yeah i mean have you ever seen that pixar short with um um i think it's called Bo or something like that and uh it's it's like this um it's a i think it's like a chinese mother um who makes these dumplings yeah and then it turns into like uh, so she saw at the very end the dump the the mother eats the dumpling yeah and she she's like oh no baby like you know she's just like she, she thinks the mother ate the baby or something like i don't know what she's thinking but i'm like no 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 it's okay and yeah. you know stuff like that or like now you're we're, we're watching things and she's starting to like you know nemo oh my gosh that's an emotional roller coaster for her Aww. you know like 
you know, like the beginning with the Barracuda and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, but it's, it's so cool to watch her watch these things. Like it's just, and then with my older kids, um, I've been watching the show with them that they just love. It's so funny. It's called, uh, I think we were in the shadows or something like that. Oh yeah. I'm um, watching that. Yeah. I'm oh, Apple dude. Plus. Yeah. It's so, so good. Yeah. It's like a vampire office. Yeah. You know? I, it's so funny. So, uh, been doing that. So I have like the different shows with the kids and then actually my, my 16 year old just got into fear factor. So oh, gosh. we've been, it's, it's so trippy because I'm watching episodes that were like, like, I mean, 20 years ago and you see Joe Rogan, so young Joe Rogan. And he, he's like, like, wow, Joe, he was a real dork. Like <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. You yeah. know, watching it, it's seen, it's, it's, it's just interesting. Um, yeah. So that we've had like our little routines to kind of like help get people's minds off of things. And, um, but I'm yeah, excited about this right. weekend Yeah, because we're getting out, we're going on the woods. That's so good. Are with all the kids? Yep. Yep. We're going to, we got, awesome. fris- got Frisbee and we're like, we're like, we're going to just try to get out of the city, you know? And yeah. Yeah. My so. kids are in school from home all day. So like they're in their offices. My daughter's in one room, my son's in the other and they're in school till three thirty or till three usually most days, but sometimes yeah. they need help with things. And yeah. So weird. Yeah. Same with yeah. mine. They're like, they're doing cook their, more. Like, I'm like, Oh, I gotta make breakfast <laughs> and lunch more. You know? See, I I like to cook, so I help I help out cook as much as I can. So I love to cook, but I'm used to not having to cook for for like I make my lunch, but I don't have to worry about anybody else because they're usually at school. So now, yeah. now I write down two options on a whiteboard, and I'm like, choose one. You don't have all <laughs> the options in the world. These are your two yeah. options. Yeah, that's that's a really good idea because that that's one. Oh, I don't want that. You know, like yeah, you're like, well, we're, that's we're not it. making five meals. It's not yeah. happening. Just eat it. I don't care what it smells like. Plug your nose. Swallow it. <laughs> and so on that funny. note, <laughs> uh, thank you again so much uh, yeah. for doing this. It's been a lot of fun um, and uh, really interesting, too. It's really cool hearing your process on things. And, um, and uh, yeah, and I, I really I want to try that, that aluminum um, panel. I want to. Oh, uh, that sounds really it. interesting. Yeah, it's cool. I think really love it because it does have a – I mean, and you can get some from Artifacts that has a little tooth to it if you don't want it too thin. So it's pretty yeah. great. That sounds awesome. So anyway, thanks again so much. And um, yeah. uh, everyone out there, thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting uh, the podcast and the artists that are on. Uh, check out uh, Shana's uh, Instagram and everything else. And uh, stay safe, and we'll all see you next time. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. 